If you've been on YouTube in this filmmaking space long enough, you've heard the saying, story is king, gear doesn't matter. Well, how frustrating is it that when you're trying to tell a great story, if you've got gear that gets in your way, well, it's really hard to tell that story. God damn you, Edel Crone. I think a more appropriate and more honest version of the saying would be, story is king and gear doesn't matter until it does. Now the problem with all of this, if you haven't noticed by now, in this industry, getting gear that you can rely on, that always works and doesn't get in your way, well, it's incredibly expensive, at least six times more expensive than you ever think it should be. Take for instance, variable ND filters. You're thinking, how much can a dark piece of glass cost me? I don't know, 30, 40 bucks, wrong. It's $200, go yourself. A few months ago, I came across an IG page that I thought was really interesting. A question I get asked a lot is, how'd I get here? My career that I've built as a creative, and the answer is honestly, really simple. I just didn't give up. This guy did a ton of his talking head stuff from a car using a car mount. I thought that was a really interesting way of moving the story forward. Quite literally, pun intended. Is there a pun in there? Anyway, it got me thinking, I really want to try a car mount. I would love to do some more creative shots to tell my story in a more creative way. So obviously I started hopping on Amazon and looking for car mounts. And what I found was this, that they belong in either one of two camps, either your ultra high budget camp, where things are going to cost thousands and thousands of dollars and require more than just you to set it up and operate it, or two, they fall into the super budget realm where the quality is uh, pure crap and it's going to be very friendly on your budget. So naturally, I bought the super crappy ultra budget one. It's right back there. This is it. This is the Titan, the heavy duty triple suction cup mount Titan. It shows that you can uh, put a DSLR on there. I would not trust this thing with a GoPro and not even a GoPro, like one of those shitty knockoff GoPros that cost like 80 bucks. See, here you go. Uh, that's when you know it's real good when it comes in this white shitty styrofoam. That's your first indicator, a first red flag, like a bad relationship. Wheels are wobbling, as they say. Let's take, for instance, one of the legs to the suction cup. There's no articulation. It's hollow, it's plastic. The connector bits, the tightening bits, the, the quarter 20 uh, screw, all of this is plastic. Imagine what would happen if you put your Sony FX3 on there, your Sony's gonna break, your will to live is gonna break. Like this suction cup, crap. It's just pure crap. Now, the ironic thing is a YouTuber, quite a big YouTuber, was the one that recommended this. And um, I should write them a strongly worded letter saying, no, do not recommend that. It's garbage. I had pretty much given up all hope of ever finding a budget car mount option after just throwing away a hundred plus dollars like that. And that was until I stumbled upon this. This is the small rig, SC415K, I think. I don't know, link down in the description below. But to prove why I think this is the best, the absolute best first car mount anybody should buy, I'm not gonna throw some cheapy GoPro or even a DSLR on there. I'm gonna put that, my $10,000 brand new Komodo X on the line. Let's set it up and go get some shots.
Now that you've seen it in action, let's talk about what comes in the kit. This one, so this is the Small Rig SC 15K. 15 uh, stands for kilograms, so it holds up to 15 kilograms. Now these are the four inch suction cups there are also six inch suction cups that you could buy separately if you wanted to put a really big rig on there. All right, so first thing is this case. You get a really nice molded case. So everything is kind of like a place to go. It's pretty nice. When you look inside this kit, you're gonna see four suction cups, not three, you get four. Now, three of these are going to attach to a magic arm and they have NATO rails at the uh, at the end, which makes sliding onto these NATO rails on the top of the suction cup super easy. Now, everything is all metal, all aluminum. Now, one of these magic arms though has this, and this is to be screwed into a lens support. So, four suction cups, three go to articulating arms that hold up the camera, and one goes to a lens support system to support, well, your lens. Duh. You're also going to get this. This is the half ball head. So I can unscrew it and you're gonna see it can move around all over the place and it does tilt, which is kind of cool. And then you can tighten up your camera here. Now, as you can see right here, this is for kind of like your quick release Arca Swiss plate. Um, we'll talk about that here in a second, but that just slides on. You can see exactly uh, where the middles line up so you know it's nice and centered and then screw it down and you're good to go. Also on the half balls, also NATO rail. So you just slide them on, tighten them up. It's very fast. One of the reasons why I like this, we're gonna get into why I like this so much here in a second. You're also going to get uh, a mini V-mount holder. So if you wanna attach a V-mount to this system, and use it to power your camera, you can. Currently, it's powering that light right there. <laughs> That's what I'm using it for. Secondly, you're going to get two different safety cables. These are a must. This is what's gonna allow you, if, if all hell breaks loose and your camera comes off of the mount, if the mount detaches from your car, these safety cables keep your camera attached to your car so it doesn't just come tumbling over. Now, I made a bold claim earlier that this should be your first camera car mount. Yes, I'm recommending this one over everything else. Why? I've got four main reasons why. Number one is obviously the price. When you compare it to the ultra budget, yes, it's more expensive, but when you compare it to like the next thing up, which is like a Tilta Hydra Alien, well, you're saving about $1,200. It's listed for $449 on Small Rig's website, or you can get it from Amazon for $379. And I think, personally, that's a steal. We talked about how expensive things are in this industry that just work, and this just works. And at $380, bucks, that's pretty darn cheap. One of the other reasons why I think it's a steal is because of number two. That's the build quality. The build quality on these pieces is absolutely fantastic. It's all aluminum all metal, you're not gonna find any plastic here. And it's incredibly well thought out. The NATO rails on everything, uh, from the suction mounts to the ball head, just make it so quick and easy to set up and use. And along those lines are number three, it's simple. I've never used a car mount in my whole life. I didn't watch a video on how to set it up, and I was able to figure it out in just a few minutes. And number four is the load capacity. I said 15 kilograms. This handles the Komodo X with a lens and a V-mount, no problem at all. And if you wanted to step up to the six inch suction cups, you could easily double your capacity. So those are the things that I love, but what about the things that I don't like? Because there are a few. The first is the Arca Swiss plate that you attach the camera to the half ball head. Now you can get everything as secure as you want. But if that thing starts coming loose, you're in a world of pain. And despite this Arca Swiss plate having two mounting locations, it often comes loose, very loose. In fact, when I was shooting the outdoor thing, it started like bouncing really bad, pulled over, pulled it off, and the screws that even have the thumb tightening little system 
had come completely loose. It was just spinning around. So that's pretty scary. I don't really know how to put a different Arca Swiss plate on or how to secure it even further. So if you've got recommendations, let me know down in the comments below. The second thing I don't like is actually not a fault of this car mount. It's going to be any car mount that doesn't have a kill shock system. So even though this is very secure, you're still going to get lots of bumps. Now, thankfully with the Komodo and its global sensor, those bumps don't look as aggravating as something with a rolling sensor, rolling shutter sensor. What you need though, is something like a kill shock. I've had multiple people suggest use a, like um, a Ronin, like a gimbal, but that doesn't work because when you put it down, it doesn't stabilize the Z-axis, you know, like the chicken head from the Ronin 4D. A kill shock is like two plates with a bunch of shocks underneath so that as it bounces like this, it stabilizes. It would be great to get a budget system and be able to get a kill shock that doesn't cost an arm and a leg because those are pretty pricey. Finally, the half ball mount, as good as it is, it's just pretty limiting. It's not a full ball head. And there's really no way to swap out the half ball head for something else to give you more articulation. We as filmmakers are always looking to improve our storytelling and getting fun creative shots is a vital part of that. And inexorably intertwined with that creative process is the gear we need to do that. Having fast, reliable gear that we can rely on that also doesn't break the bank is amazing. And that's exactly what the small rig car mount is. If you like this car mount, there is a link down in the description below so you can purchase it. It is an affiliate link, just FYI. So it doesn't cost you any extra money to use it, but it does give a little kickback to me and helps the channel out, which I would appreciate. If you liked the video and you thought it was entertaining or helpful, please make sure you hit that like button and consider subscribing. Thanks again for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.